All right, we're starting chapter three now, section 3.2. Okay, so we're here. Oops. I'm changing the assignment for 3.2. Let's make it just seven to 33 odd. So never mind about one, two, or three, or five. Seven to 33 odd. So we are now over here. Okay, so we're done with two exams. Looks like the next exam is on Friday, October the 8th. That would be roughly the halfway point of the semester already. So we should have plenty of time for that. Uh, we got several buffer days in between. So I'm aiming for 3.2 for today, Monday the 20th, and tomorrow, Tuesday the 21st. All right, so chapter three, what is chapter three about? We're dealing with polynomial functions now, mostly. Algebraic functions, strictly speaking, polynomial functions. And a reminder, we're starting with 3.2. There are no homework problems for 3.1. So go on, right? All right, so a reminder from algebra, we have polynomials, polynomial of degree n, n is the highest exponent that you see, and we have the coefficients, a n x sub n, a n to the minus one, x sub n minus one, and so on. Okay, a sub n is called the leading coefficient, okay, the coefficient of the x of the n term. Okay, a sub zero is considered the constant. Okay. <clears throat> so polynomials, six degree, Zero degree if you just have a constant, third degree, tenth degree. Leading coefficient, negative three, 17, two, one. It's the coefficient of the highest exponent. And the constant term, constant means there's no variable to it. One, 17, negative five, and zero. Okay. All right, and something you wanna be somewhat familiar with are just simply x to a particular power, h132. Okay, a whole family of functions, if you have x to an exponent, if you have an even exponent, x squared, x to the fourth, x to the sixth, they all tend to look like this. Technically speaking, the only one that's a true parabola is x squared. So x to the fourth, x to the sixth, and so on. They're still kind of U-shaped, yeah, but we don't call them parabolas, but they all generally look like this. And of course, negative x squared, negative x to the fourth, negative x to the sixth, all open down. We just have the reflection across the x-axis of all of these. Okay, and they're all even functions. They have symmetry with respect to the y-axis. Okay, and then the odd functions, y equals x, x cubed, x to the fifth, x to the seventh, they all generally look something like this. Right, odd exponents, and they have symmetry with respect to the origin. Okay, so you should tell rapidly if you have x squared, four, six, eight, and so on, they're U shaped. X to the one, three, five, seven, they all pass two quadrants, one and three, something like that. Okay. All right, so let's see what we're doing. Okay, so. We are now only doing seven through 33. So here it is for those of you who don't have the book and aren't getting it. Do that. Page 143 is where we're at, looks like. And there we go. All right, so seven, nine, 11, it looks like it's one of our basic polynomials and then transformed, move it, stretch, shrink as the case may be. Okay. All right, so before we do some of the problems that are assigned, <clears throat> let's look at a general idea on how to work out some polynomial functions. So suppose uh, given a function f of x is five, x plus two, x minus one squared, x minus five. See, where'd you get that from? I'm just making it up. Okay. Draw a rough sketch of this. We've actually done a sign chart before okay, many times, but now we're actually doing it in X and Y. Okay, so first you lay down the zeros of the function, the values of X, which make the function zero are called the zeros of the function. That's easy, negative two, one, and five. So negative two, one, and five. So right now the graph 
consists of these three dots, a negative two, one, and five. And notice I do a, a sign chart, like I've done before, something over here, 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 and here. Okay, I've got these a little bit out of order, but that's okay. Six, three, zero, and two, let's say. We're plugging in. Okay, if I plug in six, okay, and by the way, five is always positive, right? X minus one squared is always positive. So I only need to worry about the sign of that one and that one. Okay, so six plus two is positive. Six minus five is positive. They're all positive, so positive. So that means on this side, I know it goes up. And once I reach the last zero, it's always gonna go either to infinity or negative infinity. Okay, so this shoots up. Okay, let's see, what did I do over here? If I plug in negative three, I wanted to go to the other extreme. Negative three plus two is a negative. <laughs> negative three minus five is a negative. So two negatives make a positive. So on this side, it also shoots up. Okay, once you reach the, the last zero, either to the left or to the right, if it's positive, it goes to infinity. If it's negative, it goes to negative infinity. Okay, zero. Zero plus two is positive. Zero minus five is negative. So I have one negative giving me a negative. So I go down and then come back up. I don't know how far I go down. You learn that. You learn techniques of that when you get to calculus. But for now, I just know it goes down and comes up. And likewise, if I plug in two, two plus two is positive. Two minus five is negative. So three positives and negatives make a negative. So that means between two, uh, one and five, it's also negative. So the graph, generally speaking, looks something like that. So we'll be doing a lot of that. All right, now for actual homework problems, page 143.9, x minus two to the fourth power plus one. All right, so that's a transformation. We know x to the fourth generally looks like this. It's sharper than x squared, it kind of goes like this. And then I move two to the right and one up. So the vertex zero, zero moves over to two comma one. So instead of zero, zero, I go to two, one and just draw my general U shape once again. Okay. All right, 11, F of X is negative a half, X minus three cubed minus three, All right? So X cubed looks something like that. One half x cubed, all right? So one half x cubed is a vertical shrink. It doesn't go up as fast. So right below it, this dotted one over here is negative a half x cubed. And then negative a half x cubed reflects this graph across the x axis. So it's gonna be kind of like this. So I have this for negative a half x cubed. And then this moves three to the right and three down. So I'll just move zero, zero to three right, three down is three, negative three. And quickly graph something like this. All right, language that we have in this chapter, N behavior. What do we mean by N behavior? You're past the last zero or before the first zero. <laughs> okay, so you have all your zeros. Okay, N behavior, what happens when X it's really, really big. X approaches infinity is a language you'll have a lot in calculus. Or X approaches negative infinity. We go all the way out that way. Okay. Once you lay down all your zeros, okay, then you want to say what happens when you go past to the right of the last zero or to the left of the first zero. So X approaches infinity. X approaches negative infinity. All right. So here we go. F of X equals X minus two, X plus two, X minus three. Okay, just do a rough sketch of the polynomial. So first I lay down my zeros. Two, negative two, three. We've done that before, right? So right now the graph is three dots, two, negative two, and three. Then I consider N behavior. N behavior means plug in a big number like a thousand. 
plug in a, a negative big number, like negative a thousand. <laughs> it becomes pretty obvious what happens usually. If I plug in a thousand, that's positive, 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 three positives make it positive. So past the last zero, it shoots up toward infinity. If I plug in negative a thousand, you can tell right away this is negative, this is negative, this is negative. Negative times negative times negative is negative. So on this side, it goes like so. Okay, and what about D? So right now I have like that and like that. And what about in between these zeros? You can plug in a number in between, such as zero. Plug in zero, negative, positive, negative. So two negatives make it positive. It goes up and then comes down. And between two and three, 2.5. 2.5 minus two, positive. 2.5 plus two is positive. 2.5 minus three is negative, so it comes down. So a quick sketch is something like this. Okay, and f of x equals negative x cubed times x minus one, quick sketch. Okay, so the only zeros are zero and one, zero, one right there. And so right now the only graph is that. So when X approaches infinity, pick something on this side. X approaches negative infinity, pick something over here, like negative one. Okay, plug in two. Negative two cubed is negative. Two minus one, positive. Negative times positive is negative. Okay, so on this side it goes down. And how about negative? infinity, negative one. Negative one cubed is negative, times negative one makes it positive. Negative one minus one is negative two, which is a negative. So again, positive times a negative is a negative. So it goes like this. So right now the graph looks like that and like that. And how about if I plug in a half? Well, one half cubed is negative one eighth, so that's a negative. One half minus one is negative. Negative times a negative is positive. Okay, so the graph goes something like that. Okay, one more. Uh, from 18, now I know 18 is not a sign, but I'll go ahead and show it to you. X squared, X plus one, X minus two. <clears throat> We talk about the zeros of the function. We know we have zero, negative one, and two. Zero is right, it's repeated. So we say zero is a zero of multiplicity two because of the square. Okay. Back here, zero is a zero of multiplicity three. It shows up like x times x times x, right? So we say multiplicity three for zero. Here the, we have zero of multiplicity two, and negative one and two are multiplicity one. Okay, so the zeros are zero, negative one, and two. So right now we have just this. End behavior, pick something way over here, way over here. So past the last zero, so like 100. To the left of the first row, negative 100. And I notice this is always positive, right? X squared. So positive, 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 right? No matter what, that's positive. Okay, 100 plus one, positive. 100 minus two, positive. Everything is positive. Positive, goes up. How about negative 100? We already know that's positive. Negative 100 plus one, negative. Negative 100 minus two, negative. Positive times negative times negative. Positive, so it shoots out there. So right now the graph consists of this. And now what happens here and here? How do I know it goes down? So I plug in negative a half and one. Notice we did this before on a number line, but now we're actually doing a two dimensional graph. Okay, it looks like it's gonna go down. How come? Plug in negative a half. Okay, that's already positive. Negative a half plus one, positive. Negative a half minus two is negative. So positive times a positive times a negative is negative. So in here, it goes down and comes back up. 
And likewise, when I plug in one, one plus one, positive, one minus two is negative. So positive times positive is a negative. That gives me negative. So again, it goes down. So the graph looks something like so. All right, so that's it for now. Uh, a little bit of section 3.2 and I'll continue next time with more of 3.2.